Hello students, today in this video, I am going to discuss another chapter from your PT2 course. The name of the chapter is Instead of the War Drum. This is a passage about the life of Emperor Ashoka. First of all, let's have a look at the title of the chapter. Instead of the War Drum. War Drum means a drum beaten as a summon or a call to a battle. Beating a drum before a battle indicates that the battle or the war is going to start. Instead means an alternative or a substitute. So, instead of the war drum means an alternative of a battle or a war. So, what can be an alternative of a war? Of course, to accept non-violence. In this chapter, we are going to study about how Emperor Ashoka accepted non-violence instead of the war drum or so to say instead of a war or a battle. In this chapter, we are going to read about the life of Emperor Ashoka, how he became a king and fought many battles, why he gave up fighting war, how he transformed himself to a Buddhist and accepted Buddhism. We are going to learn all these things in this passage. We all know that Emperor Ashoka was a very powerful king. He was born as a prince and after his father's death became the king of Magadha. He had all the royalty and riches. Emperor Ashoka was a very ambitious king. He fought many battles and conquered many territories. But he was not satisfied. He wanted to extend his empire further. There was one kingdom named Kalinga and Emperor Ashoka wanted to make Kalinga part of his kingdom. So he started a war against the kingdom of Kalinga. Emperor Ashoka won the battle but he was not happy because the battle of Kalinga was bloody and horrific. So, so many people were killed in the battle. Emperor Ashoka felt very sad when he saw the dead bodies on the battlefield. So, he decided not to fight any battle anymore. He realized that war can only bring bloodshed and nothing else. For this realization, Ashoka converted himself to Buddhism. He changed his religion and became a Buddhist. He also took many steps to popularize and spread Buddhism. This is the real essence of the chapter. So students, now let's start reading the chapter. A long time ago, in the 3rd century BCE, a young woman was sailing to a far away island. She wore patched robes and had a shaved head. Her brother was waiting for her on the island. They were both on a mission. She was not just any young woman. She was the princess of Magadha and a Buddhist monk. Her name was Sanghamitra. She and her twin brother Mahindra had been sent to Sri Lanka by their father Emperor Ashoka to help spread Buddhism. Note down the important word meanings. Sailing means to travel by a ship or a boat. The full form of BCE is before common era. War is the past tense form of wear. Patched means spotted. Robes means loose dress. Buddhist means a person who follows the religion Buddhism. Monk means a religious devotee. Emperor means a ruler or a monarch or a king. So, in the starting of the passage, we get to know about a woman named Sanghamitra who was sailing to a far away island. And her twin brother Mahindra was waiting for her on that island. As I told you, this passage is about the life of Emperor Ashoka. So, the question must be arising in your mind that how this woman Sangamitra and her twin brother Mahindra are related to Emperor Ashoka. Well, let me tell you that Sangamitra was the eldest daughter of Emperor Ashoka and Mahindra was his son. A long time ago in the 3rd century BCE, a young woman was sailing to a far away island. She was sailing means she was traveling by a boat to a far away island. She wore patched robes and had a shaved head. 
This woman who was sailing to a faraway island was wearing a patched or spotted robe means a loose dress and she had a shaved head means she had no hair on the head. Her brother was waiting for her on the island. They were both on a mission. Her brother means the brother of that woman who was sailing. Her brother was already there on that island where she was sailing to and he was waiting for her to come. Both of them, the woman and her brother were on a mission. She was not just any young woman. She was the princess of Magadh and a Buddhist monk. Her name was Sanghamitra. So, we get to know that the young woman who was not like any other woman was the princess of Magadh and her name was Sanghamitra. She was a Buddhist monk means a true devotee of Buddhism or Buddha. She and her twin brother Mahindra had been sent to Sri Lanka by their father Emperor Ashoka to help spread Buddhism. Sanghamitra and her twin brother Mahindra both of them were sent to Sri Lanka by their father. And who was their father? Emperor Ashoka. Sangamitra and Mahindra were sent to Sri Lanka to spread Buddhism. They were the Buddhist monks and they went there to preach Buddhism. Mahindra had been preaching Buddhism to the people of Sri Lanka before his sister arrived. Sangamitra began to work with the women of the country and started an order of the female monks or nuns. She also carried a cutting of the Bodhi tree under which Gautam Buddha attained enlightenment. Legend says the tree she planted still thrives in Sri Lanka. Preaching or preach means to deliver religious lecture. Nun means a female religious devotee. Enlightenment means knowledge about or understanding of something. Legend means myth or tale or unrealistic story. Thrives means to grow or to flourish. Mahindra had been preaching Buddhism to the people of Sri Lanka before his sister arrived. Before Sangamitra reached Sri Lanka, Mahindra was already there and he was preaching Buddhism to the people of Sri Lanka. He was delivering religious lecture on Buddhism and was encouraging the people of Sri Lanka to accept Buddhism. Sangamitra began to work with the women of the country and started an order of female monks or nuns. So, like her brother Mahindra, Sangamitra also started working to spread Buddhism in Sri Lanka. She began to work with the women of the country and made a group of female monks or nuns. She also carried a cutting of the Bodhi tree under which Gautam Buddha attained enlightenment. The Bodhi tree is believed to be a sacred tree under which Gautam Buddha sat and attained enlightenment. Sangamitra carried a cutting or a piece of that Bodhi tree to Sri Lanka and planted there. Legend says the tree she planted still thrives in Sri Lanka. According to some legends or myths, it is believed that the tree Sangamitra planted there in Sri Lanka a long time ago still thrives or flourishes. It is believed that the tree is still there. Emperor Ashoka was an ardent Buddhist. He took many steps to popularize the religion both within his own empire which covered most of the Indian subcontinent including what is now Afghanistan and Balochistan and abroad. In addition to sending his children to preach in Sri Lanka, he recruited Buddhist monks and sent them as emissaries to countries as far as Syria, Egypt and Macedonia. Ardent means very enthusiastic. Abroad means in foreign countries. Recruited means appointed. Emissaries means people sent from one country to another to perform a special task. Emperor Ashoka was an ardent Buddhist, means he was very enthusiastic as a Buddhist and he took many steps to popularize the religion, both within his own empire 
which covered most of the Indian subcontinent including what is now Afghanistan and Balochistan and abroad. He took many steps means he did many works to popularize the religion Buddhism both in his own empire and abroad or in foreign countries. In addition to sending his children to preach in Sri Lanka, he recruited Buddhist monks and sent them as emissaries to countries as far as Syria, Egypt and Macedonia. He sent his children that is Sangamitra and Mahindra to preach in Sri Lanka and he also appointed Buddhist monk and sent them to countries like Syria, Egypt and Macedonia as emissaries means these monks were given the particular task of preaching Buddhism. Many prominent Buddhist monks and officials from Ashoka's court also went to Southeast Asia to propagate their religion. Prominent means remarkable or noteworthy or eminent. Court here means kingdom. Propagate means to spread an idea or a belief among people. Many prominent Buddhist monks and officials from Ashoka's court means from Ashoka's kingdom went to Southeast Asia to propagate or to spread their religion Buddhism. Emperor Ashoka was a true devotee of Buddhism. He was an ardent Buddhist so he was doing all these things to spread Buddhism in the entire world. He built a number of stupas which are believed to hold the relics of the Buddha. The Sanchi Stupa built by Ashoka is now a world heritage site. In addition, he erected a number of inscribed pillars, one of them being the Ashok pillar. Similar inscriptions have also been found on boulders and in caves. In all, 33 such inscriptions have been found, which are collectively referred to as Ashoka's edicts. The inscriptions proclaim Ashoka's belief in the Buddhist principles of Dharma or non-violence and his intention to win over people by good deeds. They also talk about his social efforts to protect his subjects, both humans and animals. Stupas means doom-shaped Buddhist monuments. Relics means things that are from a historic time, place or culture. World Heritage Site means place of historical importance. Erected means built. Inscribed means to write or carve words or symbol, sorry, symbols on something. Boulders means large stone or rocks. Caves means den. Edicts means authority or official order. Proclaim means to announce officially or publicly. Emperor Ashoka built many stupas or Buddhist monuments and these monuments are believed to hold the relics of Gautam Buddha. There is one stupa named the Sanchi Stupa which was built by Emperor Ashoka and this Sanchi Stupa is now a world heritage site. Emperor Ashoka also erected or built a number of inscribed pillar, one of them being the Ashok pillar. Inscribed pillar means something something was carved or written on those pillars. Similar inscriptions have also been found on boulders and in caves. In all, 33 such inscriptions have been found, which are collectively referred to as Ashoka's edicts. In total, there are 33 such inscriptions which were made by Ashoka. The inscriptions proclaim Ashoka's belief in the Buddhist principles of Dharma or non-violence and his intention to win over people by good deeds. So the inscriptions which were made by Ashoka gives us an idea about his belief in the Buddhist principles of Dharma or non-violence and also about his nature or intention to win over people by his good deeds or good works. They also talk about his social efforts to protect his subjects, both humans and animals. Subjects here means those, um, those who were under his kingdom or empire. 
and Emperor Ashoka regarded both the humans and animals as his subjects and he always protected them. Emperor Ashoka is referred to as Devanam Piyadasi, beloved of the gods in these edicts. But Emperor Ashoka was not always called the beloved of the gods. When he was a young prince, Ashoka's nickname was Chand Ashoka. It was a well-deserved nickname. Beloved means a loved one or a dear one. Fierce means savage or violent. We have read that there are 33 such inscriptions and these are referred to as Ashoka's edicts. And in these edicts or inscriptions, Ashoka is referred to as Devanam Piyadasi, which means beloved of the gods. But Emperor Ashoka was not always called as the beloved of the gods. When he was a young prince, Ashoka's nickname was Chand Ashoka. Chand means fierce. It was a well-deserved nickname for him because as a young prince, he was a fearless and active warrior and he was not afraid of anyone. So Chand Ashoka was a well-deserved nickname for him. As a young child, Ashoka had a skin disease that made him unpleasant to look at. His father Bindusara did not like him very much, so Ashoka decided to prove himself. He became a fearless warrior. Eventually, his father began to follow him as a soldier and a statesman. Bindusara made Ashoka the governor of a far-off province. The prince also led small wars in the distant parts of the kingdom. After Bindusara died, Ashoka declared himself to be the new king. However, Ashoka's order, sorry, Ashoka's older brothers wanted the throne for themselves. This led to a two-year war of succession in which Ashoka defeated his brothers and became King Ashoka. Unpleasant means not charming. Warrior means fighter. Statesman means leader. Far off means distant. Province means a region or country. Throne means the position of a monarch or a king. Succession means passing off royal power. Defeat means to beat in a battle or in a contest. When Ashoka was a young child, he had a skin disease and that made him very unpleasant or ugly to look at. Ashoka's father's name was Bindusara and his father Bindusara did not like him very much for that reason because he had a skin disease. So Ashoka decided to prove himself in front of his father. He became a fearless warrior. Eventually his father Bindusara began to value him as a soldier and a statesman. His father started believing that Ashoka is a good soldier and is capable to become a statesman or a leader. Bindusara made Ashoka the governor of a far off province. Ashoka was made the governor of a far off distant province or a region, a far off place from Magadh. Magadh was the name of their kingdom and Ashoka was made the governor of a far off province or a region from Magadh. The prince also led small wars in distant parts of the kingdom. As a governor he was also allowed to fight some small wars. After Bindusara died, Ashoka declared himself to be the new king. However, Ashoka's older brothers wanted the throne for him sorry, wanted the throne for themselves. This led to a two year war of succession, in which Ashoka defeated his brothers and became a King Ashoka. So after his father's death, Ashoka declared himself to be the new king of Magadh. But his older brothers were not happy with this because they wanted the throne for themselves. They did not want Ashoka to become the king. So this led to a two-year war of succession for the throne or the kingdom. In the two-year war of succession with his brothers, Ashoka defeated them and became King Ashoka. For eight years after his coronation, Ashoka fought many wars and conquered many territories, but the ambitious king was still not satisfied. 
there was one kingdom in the east of India that still refused to submit to him. This was the kingdom of Kalinga, which covered the present day northern Andhra Pradesh, most of Orissa and a portion of Madhya Pradesh. Emperor Ashoka was determined to make Kalinga part of his kingdom. So the king started a war against the neighboring kingdom, leading the war efforts himself. Coronation is a ceremony in which a new king or queen is crowned. Fought. See the word fought. Fought is the past and past participle form of fight. Conquer means to acquire or to win. Ambitious means aspiring or strongly desirous or full of desires. After his coronation ceremony or after he became a king, Ashoka fought so many wars for 8 years and also conquered or won many territories. But the ambitious king was still not satisfied. Emperor Ashoka was an ambitious king. He always wanted to extend his empire. He had already conquered so many territories but still he was not satisfied. There was one kingdom in the east of India that still refused to submit to him. This was the kingdom of Kalinga, which covered the present day northern Andhra Pradesh, most of Orissa and a portion of Madhya Pradesh. In the east of India, there was one kingdom named Kalinga and this king refused to submit or to surrender to King Ashoka. This kingdom of Kalinga covered the present day states of Andhra Pradesh, Orissa and Madhya Pradesh. Emperor Ashoka was determined to make Kalinga part of his kingdom. He anyhow wanted to conquer Kalinga. So he started a war against the neighboring kingdom that is Kalinga. Leading the war efforts himself, he prepared for the war himself. The Kalinga war was bloody and horrific. The people of Kalinga fought bravely but they were overpowered by Ashoka's large army. Kalinga was plundered and destroyed. The edicts that survive say that as many as 1 lakh people were killed in the war. Plundered means looted. The battle of Kalinga was bloody and horrific. It took many lives. The people of Kalinga fought bravely in the war, but they could not fight more with Ashoka's large army. Emperor Ashoka was a very powerful king and he had a large army. So, he overpowered the kingdom of Kalinga. Kalinga was plundered and looted by his army and then destroyed. The edicts or inscriptions of Ashoka shows that more than 1 lakh people were killed in the battle. The battle of Kalinga was so horrific. It took so many lives. When the war finally ended, Ashoka looked around him and saw hundreds of corpses on the battlefield. Instead of feeling happy about extending his empire further, he found himself feeling sad about the loss of life and property. He swore to never wage another war again. Corpse means dead bodies. Swear is the past tense form of the verb swear. Swear means to vow or to take an oath. Wage means to conduct or to carry out. After the war ended, King Ashoka was not happy with the outcome or the consequence. He felt very sad. When he looked around him, he saw hundreds of corpses or dead bodies on the battlefield. He conquered Kalinga and extended his empire, but he was not feeling happy. He felt sad about the loss of life and property. King Ashoka swore to never wage or conduct another war again. He took an oath that he will never fight again. He will never conduct a war again. This realization led to Ashoka's conversion to Buddhism and he made it the state religion. He banned hunting, drew up a list of protected animals and even urged his subjects to stop eating meat and turn vegetarian. He visited several sites important to Buddhism as well. Conversion means to convert or to change. Arch means to provoke or to encourage. 
King Ashoka realized that war can only bring destruction. It can only lead to bloodshed and violence. And for this realization, Ashoka converted himself to Buddhism and became a Buddhist. He also made it the state religion of his kingdom. He banned hunting and drew up a list of protected animals, means he made a list of animals that were to be protected from being hunted. King Ashoka urged his subject. His subjects means the people of his kingdom. He urged the people of his kingdom to stop eating meat and turn vegetarian. He also visited several sites. Site means place. He visited places which are important or related to Buddhism. He became a true Buddhist from inside. On visiting Lumbini, the birthplace of Gautam Buddha, Ashoka erected a pillar with an inscription saying that the village was exempted from paying tax. Erected, as I already told you, means to build. Exempted means free from a duty or an obligation. King Ashoka visited Lumbini, the birthplace of Gautam Buddha, and erected or built a pillar. And on that pillar, he inscribed and so, sorry, he inscribed or wrote that the village was exempted from paying tax. Means the village was free from paying any tax. True to his word, Ashoka dedicated the rest of his life to popularizing Buddhism. Today, almost 70% of all Sri Lankas practice a branch of Buddhism and 400 to 500 million people around the world follow Buddhism, a living proof of Emperor Ashoka's change of heart. Emperor Ashoka was true to his words, means he did what he said. He dedicated the rest of his life popularizing or preaching Buddhism. And today, 70% of all Sri Lankans practice a branch of Buddhism. And 400 to 500 million people around the world follow Buddhism. And this is a living proof of Ashoka's change of our heart. Means, this shows that King Ashoka literally changed himself from a warrior to a Buddhist. He never fought a war again and devoted himself to Buddhism. So, this is all about the chapter instead of the war drum. I hope all of you have understood the chapter well.